I'm Steve Dietrich. I live just outside of Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I'm working on the Ferry Farm project, making what I call the seven easy pieces of furniture, which is four low post uh, rope beds, a blanket chest, a sugar box, and a stretcher table. So my mission was to make four low post beds. The example that the foundation has selected was a bed in Weatherburn's Tavern in Williamsburg. I went down and measured that bed. So a little while after that I went to Kenmore House. I looked in a room off to the side and there was this beautiful red bed. So we went right in and started measuring and photographing the bed. So how do I make a copy of a bed that's got turned legs and the rails and the holes for the roping and get it uh, exact or, or very close? So I do that by making patterns. So when I got home with the measurements and the photographs I had, I made this pattern uh, for the leg. And I use this when I chuck up this big chunk of wood on my lathe that gets turned into a la uh, leg like this. So when I have this chucked in the lathe, I put the pattern like this and I've got little nicks all along the pattern and while the wood's turning I take a pencil and I hold it on the nick and it makes marks. So I've got the base of the foot, I've got the middle of this little ball, and then I can take a parting tool, and I've also got the, the thicknesses written on my piece. I have the thicknesses on here, so my, my stock, my timber is going to be thicker than, than the uh, biggest dimension, and I turn it, and the top of the ball here is going to be right about two and a half inches, so I just put it on here and turn it down until I've got two and a half inches and I put a little score to let me know where the top dead center of that ball is and I round it over from there. And I just work my way up and down the leg doing that. To help guide me I created a little curve here that should match the curve on the leg so I can hold that up to the leg while it's turning to see that I'm getting close and that helps me achieve consistency between all four legs that I'm turning. I did the same thing for the ball on the top. I can put this little curve up to the ball and you can see it fits it pretty well. So that's how all, all the balls wind up the same. For the uh, headboard, I actually uh, traced the profile of the headboard and the rest of it is straight across and I took notes on this to give me all the dimensions I need to make the entire bed. I have everything I need for these patterns here to make another copy of this bed. These beds uh, have come apart. On the Kenmore bed the headboard and the foot piece are pegged together. On the Williamsburg bed all the rails and posts come apart. So to keep everything straight they would be numbered. So this is number 11 and this is number 11. On the original bed I looked at the evidence of the original makers and I found on the rails these scribe lines right here. Those tell me where the mortise and where the tenons are. So there's a tenon that sticks out from the rail into a mortise inside the post. And you can see that the maker uh, and I also copied it, scribed up the side of the post. So this is the tenon, and this marks the mortise. So that's how I knew where to cut the tenon and where to cut the mortise. Another thing I'd like to point out is I've got some ugly tear out right here along this joint. You see that on original pieces, and as the uh, shop masters had their apprentices 
Are there indentured servants or slaves working on these pieces? Even the masters. If you get tear out, you're in a hurry to get a piece done. You've got to sail. You've got to deliver. You've got to get on the next piece. You've got to stay ahead of starvation. It is what it is. Slap some paint on it and get it out the door. And that's the style of work that went into the beds like this. That's the style of work I put in this bed. Thank you.